Andy here with the Fence Post, Andy Music and Vinyl Blog, and I am continuing my countdown of the top 20 albums of 2003. Let's get started. Cracking the top 10 is The Postal Service. Death Cab for Cutie and The Postal Service are hitting the road this year, in 2023, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of transatlanticism, which I just covered recently, and this album, Give Up. The Postal Service is, of course, Ben Gibbard from Death Cab for Cutie and Jimmy Tamborello from Dintel. Give Up was a monumental shift for Gibbard, not just entering into electropop for the first time, but doing so with such power that elevated him, and you could almost even argue Death Cab, as a true force to be reckoned with in indie rock. This album has really had a mark on popular culture as well. You know, I remember first hearing Shanty for the Arthusa the week Her Majesty came out in 2003. The song is the opening track off of the Decemberist's sophomore LP, Her Majesty, and I recall being completely blown away by the song. In fact, I went out and picked up the album immediately thereafter. It was the orchestration, the theatrics of it all, that really hooked me. It took the historical references and book nerdery of the band's debut album, Castaways and Cutouts, to an entirely different level. And I was, and still am, completely here for it. Honestly, the rest of the album doesn't quite live up to that opener, but it's packed with great tracks. Los Angeles, I'm Yours, uh, The Soldiering Life, The Bachelor and the Bride. So many great ones. Underachievers, Please Try Harder, is the second album by Scottish indie pop band Camera Obscura. Charming and infectious, the release blended elements of twee pop, folk, indie pop, to a sound that was both beautifully endearing and kind of cleverly sophisticated. The album's witty lyrics, jangly guitars, and Tracy Ann Campbell's, well, sweetly melodic and melancholic vocals, they're all instantly nostalgic, bittersweet, captivating. Underachievers Please Try Harder propelled Camera Obscura well beyond whatever acclaim they received with Bigger Blue or Hi-Fi, their debut. This is the LP that really got me excited about Camera Obscura. Shoots Too Narrow is the second album by The Shins, and it saw the band altering and advancing sounds they gave us with O oh, Inverted World. Though both maintained this similar overall aesthetic, Shoots Too Narrow moved a bit away from the dreamier, lower-fi qualities of their debut. Thus, they gave us an LP with crisper production, a wider range of instrumentation, and slightly more structured songs. James Mercer continued to deliver clever wordplay and infectious melodies. The Magnolia Electric Company was Jason Molina's seventh and the final release under the moniker Songs Ohio before transitioning to using the name of this release, the Magnolia Electric Company, as a band. It is no surprise that the LP saw Molina and company in a bit of a transition period themselves, infusing more country rock into their existing Americana and folk sounds. That said, the album is just as hauntingly beautiful with Molina's distinctive and captivating vocals as literally anything else by him. The Magnolia Electric Company has since become a, a bit of a cult classic of indie rock and a testament to Molina's artistry and enduring influence on Americana. Lesser Matters is the debut album by Swedish band The Radio Department, and it's among the most played LPs in my collection. In the early days, the radio department was a bit more lo-fi than electronic, and it married indie pop with shoegaze, helping to spark this resurgence in the latter that kind of blew up in the mid to late 2000s. The album's dreamy, atmospheric instrumentation and hushed vocals combined with its use of samples and electronics created a sound that was ethereal yet grounded. Lesser Matters was a critical success, praised for its sonic experimentation and emotional depth. I struggled at first with putting this on my list. It's You Forgot It in People by Broken Social Scene. After all, Wikipedia and Discogs 
highlight that technically this album was released in 2002. Contrarily, Spotify lists it as a 2003 release and Pitchfork dropped it in at number nine on their best albums of 2003. You Forgot It and People Saw Broken Social Scene kind of honing their sound, mastering it, injecting their catchiest, most memorable songs up until that point, and frankly, since. Anthem for a 17-year-old girl, Cause Equals Time, Lovers Spit, Stars and Sons. I mean, the list just doesn't end. It's hard not to put this album higher on my list, but in terms of impact over time, there are three others that top it. Transatlanticism is the fourth studio album by Death Cab for Cutie, and it was pivotal in the band's transformation into spotlighting more dreamy soundscapes with layered instrumentation and melodic hooks. Yet Ben Gibbard and company stayed true to their signature emotive songwriting. This one truly took Death Cab to a whole new level. If you count 2002 storytelling, which to be honest is a bit of a toss up, Dear Catastrophe Waitress is Bell and Sebastian's sixth studio album. It marked a stunning departure from their earlier, more reclusive sound. The prior few albums saw front band Stuart Murdoch stepping out of the spotlight and other members incorporating songs into the band's albums that, frankly, left them a little bit disjointed. Now, that's something I talk a little bit more about in the video for this album, link in description. With Dear Catastrophe Waitress, Bill and Sebastian sought outside production, which allowed them more time to focus on creative process. The result was better orchestral arrangements, catchier hooks, wittier lyrics, and that signaled a newfound sense of confidence, ambition, and more for the band. Songs like Dear Catastrophe Waitress, Piazza New York Catcher, Step Into My Office Baby, and I'm a Cuckoo, they all remain favorites from the band to this day. Easy top three pick for me easily deserving my number two spot. This may be an odd one to see at the top of a best of list, but it's one of my all time Desert Island favorite albums. Packed with incredible pop hooks, yet inundated with fuzz and distortion, I have been a huge fan of The Legends and their debut LP, up against the legends since I discovered it around 2004 or 2005. Similar to Broken Social Scene, sometimes this ends up on best of lists for 2004. No physical releases, honestly, dropped until that year. However, Labrador, Wikipedia, and more call it a 2003 release. Little Teddy Recordings didn't release this on vinyl, still the only variant pressed to wax until November of 2004. This will always hold a special place in my heart. That's my list. And as always, this list is a roundup of my personal selections. And while it is relatively comprehensive, 2003 was pretty remarkable for a year in music. And a few items that should be present aren't. Why? Because I don't have them in my collection. Albums like Elephant, by the White Stripes, maybe. Though that probably wouldn't have really gotten higher than the top 15. Somewhere around 10, give or take a few, would have been Dead Cities, Red Seas, and Lost Ghosts by M83. And then there's Echoes by The Rapture. That would have easily rounded out the top five. My question, what would you add to the list that I've covered? Let me know down in the comments and call out your number one album of 2003. As always, I am nowhere near done reviewing and unboxing my entire record collection, so please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video, and I will see you next time. God, that sun is just like fucking ridiculous. I had to like rush at the end. Thanks for sticking around.